into Severin, Maryland, just south of Baltimore. Archbishop Spalding looking for a charmed homecoming night as they welcome in national power, St. Joe's Prep of Philadelphia. Howdy football fans, Jeremy Huber here with Linnell Willingham on a wet, rainy night, but we're jacked up. The big man next to me, he's about to tackle somebody. Linnell, again, looking for a great game between two powers, two different cities. Yeah, it's homecoming. You mentioned two powers, two different cities, two of the best teams on the East Coast. It's Spalding's homecoming. They got a raucous crowd out here right now. It should be a good one. Let's jump into our players to watch in this one. Let's start off with St. Joe's and Samaj Jones. Yeah, Coach Tim Roker, when we talked to him during the week, he called Samaj the face of the program. He had a lot of big shoes to fill, taking over for Ohio State quarterback Kyle McCord a couple of seasons ago. Each and every year, though, this coaching staff impressed with his ability to grasp even more of the playbook. As we sit here right now, he's got full command of this offense, and he looks to put it on display here tonight. Another transformational type player for Archbishop Spalding, their player to watch, it's Malik Washington. Malik Washington, not just one of the best quarterbacks in the state of Maryland, Jeremy, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He's got offers from Oregon, Maryland, Texas A&M, Duke, so one of the most decorated quarterbacks in the class of 2025. Prototypical size of the position, 6'4", 200 pounds. He can sling it, Jeremy. I expect him to do it a lot tonight. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. You have an opportunity to do well academically athletically but you also have an opportunity to do well vertically with the building between yourself and God and what more can you ask for A great national anthem and a jazzed up crowd here at Whittles Field on the campus of Archbishop Spalding High School. A chance for the Cavaliers to really break their name out there, Linnell, as they take on a really good St. Joe's team. Yeah, this is the second nationally ranked game of the season uh, for this Archbishop Spalding football program. We got the opportunity to talk to the athletic director, John Mellinger. And at the beginning of the season, they went into this saying, look, we want to get our name uh, on the national level even more and having Don Bosco prep on your schedule, having St. Joe's prep on your schedule uh, is a darn good way to get some recognition. If you were wondering, that is the common opponent for these two teams, both 6-1 and one on the year. St. Joe's beat Don Bosco prepped at Bosco in New Jersey 28-7 to seven in a game that you did this year, Spalding yep. over Don Bosco here in just south of Baltimore 28-14. to 14. Spalding wins the toss as they defer to the second half. So St. Joe's will receive, kicking it off for this Spalding team, Cooper Welch. And back deep for St. Joe's, known for their really good special teams units. As Elijah Jones back there along with, it's going to go to Jones who takes it at the 10 yard line. Getting across the field, and he'll be spun down just short of the 30-yard line. So 27-yard line, that's where St. Joe's will start first and 10. Yeah, it's interesting, Jeremy. Coming into this one, knowing we have some weather right now, this St. Joe offense, 60-40 in terms of their run-pass balance. They want to keep things on the ground uh, with Kasim Phillips and Isaiah West, the quarterback that we talked about in the open as well. Uh, he gets involved in the running game as well, so. We'll see how they try to attack her on this opening drive. Here comes St. Joe's, led out by Samaj Jones, their senior quarterback out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, committed to Cincinnati. Finally ranked dual threat quarterback in the class of 2024. Three wide receivers one way, quick screen pass out as he finds Raymond, and Raymond knocked down short of the sticks, but a nice gain of around eight on the play. Yeah, Brendan Raymond, they love the way this young man has matured over the years. Uh, within this program really popped and started to get looks uh, in the spring of his junior season and 
Right now he's paying it forward. Out there alongside, actually just behind Jones is Kasim Phillips, the senior out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. As Jones keeps, it'll be brought down very close to the sticks. Might be just a yard short as that linebacking group came up for Spalding to lay the wood. Yeah, it's a decorated linebacker group from Spalding. They all take it personally coming up and trying to stop the run there. All night long, we're going to have to watch this matchup of Samaj Jones uh, versus this Archbishop Spalding defense. He's a legit dual-threat quarterback, Jeremy, and you saw it right there. Not afraid to lower his shoulder on the finish. Five wide receiver set here, four to one side. And now Jones will hold up as he goes for the audible. Phillips, one of the guys out wide along with fellow running back guy Isaiah West. And Jones will keep up the middle. He goes. He's got first down yardage. Tries to leap a man. Can't do it. Wow. Brought down. But the man that tackles him goes down. And now a flag comes in from the outside. So a lot to sort out here. As it appears that going down on that play was Tyler Brown, the Liberty commit, key part of this secondary for this Archbishop Spalding team. Definitely. We know this Archbishop Spalding secondary. You're going to get tested this afternoon. Some really good receivers across the field for St. Joe's. Officials will talk this one over. The personal foul on St. Joe's, I believe that might be on the hurdle. Wow. I, know, I believe at one point that was, that was outlawed. We do not have a microphone from the official tonight, so... Miles Jones on that one, trying to get creative, getting yards any way he can. So, going to mark this back as Tim Roken trying to get his explanation here. But, and again, Tyler Brown's still down. That's something you don't want to see if you're this Archbishop Spalding team. He's a key player here, three-year starter, and as Coach... Kyle Schmidt told us, as productive of a player as we've had, had seven interceptions last season. Yeah, to have that many interceptions, Jeremy, at the high school level is just <laughs> shows you the ball skills that that young man has for sure. So Brown is up. And trying to clear himself up here. So maybe a key man down for Spalding early in this game. And that's one of the things when you take on a powerhouse team like a St. Joe's, you really kind of have to have everybody up, and it's tough to lose them early in a game. Yeah, 100%, because you know this St. Joe's offense, they lean on this ground attack, and it's something that will wear on you through the duration of four quarters. So the health definitely going to be key for this Spalding defense. So because of the personal foul, Happening during the play, the ball gets moved back, so it's actually a third and five now, so not a post-possession personal foul. So a chance for Spalding to catch a break and make a stop. Offensive line up front for St. Joe's. Projected starters, Towns, Stewart, Steele, Leonard, and Schreiber from left to right. Jones to the outside. Jones is going to have first down yardage as he's brought down after a gain of eight. Just see how much they use Samaj Jones in this running game. Just a little QB power on that one. Nice job getting on the edge. You mentioned this St. Joe's prep offensive line. I mean, one of the better ones in the country, as you see. I thought we are going to get a replay on that one. But, no, this, this St. Joe's offensive line, Jeremy, as you know, one of the best in the country, veteran group. Uh, they got some young pups up there as well. Spalding showing blitz. They come, quick pass out and short hops. The intended receiver, Elijah Jones, also a Cincinnati commit. And I'll bring up a second down. Yeah, Elijah Jones, one of the guys they like to get the ball in space. Can make you pay and make you miss in the open field. Uncharacteristic miss there, though, by Jeremy from Jones. He had the receiver wide open there, and as you mentioned, just one hops it. Derek Sanchez now into the game as the running back. If it looks a little funky to you, they really go as they're tight in a second offensive lineman. So that's David Felder as Spalding's going to jump off sides. 
So you will look at that formation and see what looks like six or seven offensive linemen, but they basically just say whoever the guy who doesn't start on the offensive yeah. line goes to tight end. You know what that tells me about Tim Roken's bunch? Running the football, Jeremy, a lifestyle choice. So they yes. are committed to it 110%. <laughs> So five yards against Spalding. Seconds and five. Handoff and up the middle, just short of the sticks, goes Sanchez. So the third one coming up. Yeah, Sanchez, part of this deep, dynamic backfield for St. Joe's Prep. You'll see a couple of different guys throughout the contest. And a quarterback sneak, and without the guys behind them, that looks a lot like Jalen Hurts <laughs> fitting as it's a Philadelphia yeah. team as Samaj Jones gets the first down easily. It's key for – we see that that look again here tonight. These defensive tackles, Brush Bishop Spalding, trying to get low center of gravity and do what you can. Jones in the shotgun, sends Washington in motion. Fakes the handoff, no, gives the handoff around the end, and big gain of about 13 yards for Eric Sanchez. So St. Joe's keeping the chains moving. You can start to tell even on this opening drive, Jeremy, this running game starting to wear down this Spalding defense a little bit. They're making a concerted effort to get to the perimeter. Hawks mixing up the wide receiver group. Ramir Hardy, number 88, in along with Elijah Jones. So David Washington out there and Brandon Raymond, your four wideouts, west, the back of the backfield. Quick swings it out to him, makes the catch. A lot of room and a flag down. West is dragging tacklers, finally brought down after a gain of six, but it looks like this one's going to come back. Isaiah West. Let's see what the penalty is here. Will be a hold. Yeah. Interesting play there, Linnell. Yeah. As that was a backward lateral on a night like this, yeah, you take dangerous. that one out of the out of the playbook. Yeah, definitely is dangerous. We had a situation like that a couple of weekends ago at Georgetown where there was a bang bang call on a play like that. I'm interested and curious to see Jeremy throughout the night how they use Isaiah West. He's got 47 carries on the season, but you see it right there. More than capable as a pass catching threat out of the backfield. They'll line him up in the slot on occasion as well. So much talent for this St. Joseph's team. Looked like Spalding wasn't ready. Yeah, and West with it. He's going to keep going as the Cavaliers not wrapping up and a huge gain all the way down to the 20 yard line. And about a 25 yard run, and a couple Cavs had a chance at him. This didn't wrap him up. No, they didn't. And Isaiah West getting north and south with a purpose you see it right here keeping the legs churning first man is rarely going to make this young man fall to the ground Spalding going to have to rally here the rest of the night if they want to stop this rushing attack it's going to be a long night for the Cavs if they don't wrap up handoff and hit in the middle and brought down for a big loss is Taj Deitches they'll actually mark him for only a two yard loss Elmar White on the stop. We talked to Coach Schmidt during the week. His ability to shed blocks, that wrestling background, really helps him with that. You saw it right there. Those violent, aggressive hands that he plays with. The junior, a big part of this defense. Why the guy Kyle Schmidt really happy about. Yeah. Transferred over and thinks he can be a really, really good one. That front three for Spalding, White, McVicker, and Philpot. We've seen a lot of Michael Oliver already tonight. Second and 15, Jones over the middle. It's almost intercepted, but it's going to be at least holding and now pass interference on Archbishop Spalding, and that one pretty clear from up here. Yeah, it looked like got two hands. Tyler Brown thought he had a pick. Well, one thing there, Linnell, is yeah. that it appeared that the Spalding DB just panicked a little bit as it didn't look like it was going to be connection anyway. Yeah. One of those bang bang plays. So tough one for Spalding to give up a situation where they had St. Yeah. Joe's at first and second and 15. Now 
It's a lot of the story of what Coach Roken told us about his defense, getting stops on first and second down, then getting into these third and longs and either giving up a long completion or having a costly penalty. So they assess the penalty, but not an automatic first down, so second and four. And they hand it off and bounce it to the outside, getting down to the five-yard line goes Kasim Phillips. So chains move again for the prep. Kasim Phillips, the bell cow of this St. Joe prep running back room the past couple of years. He's a captain. We'll go on and play at Towson next year, but you see it. They got a multitude of different backs, Jeremy, all a little bit different flavor to them. Just up the road to be playing his college ball as, again, Phillips off tackle, and a flag goes down right around the tackle, so either a holding or possibly a face mask. And looks like it may be a face mask. It will be. So some mistakes early on for Archbishop Spalding in a game they really cannot afford to make them. No, they cannot. I know it's another opportunity for this program to prove themselves on the national level as one of the best teams on this East Coast. So now a first and goal. Ball spotted at the three-yard line. And on the run will be Samaj Jones, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown for St. Joe's Prep as they break the ice with 6.32 left to go. Yeah, they, they run Jones right behind the big right side of that offensive line. Christian Leonard, the sophomore, and J.P. Stribber, the senior, clearing the way there. We talked to Coach Roken during the week. He was really excited about Christian Leonard, just a sophomore, and Jeremy, just what he could become here for this program uh, in the coming years. Skyler's shoulder on for the extra point. Really solid kicker for this St. Joe's prep team. And now looks like Spalding is off sides. That's going to move it closer. Let's see if that changes Tim Roken's line of thinking here. He's going to decline it. It's interesting. Don't see that very often. No, you do not. Wonder what the thought process was on that. Guessing don't want to get it too close. Sometimes that could be an issue for a kicker, but usually a straight on kicks, that's yeah. not really a problem. Maybe a big fake coming here? Who knows? But shoulder back in position. High snap. Puts it down and up and good. So the Hawks break on the board first. With the four-yard run from Samaj Jones, they lead Archbishop Spalding 7-0 here on the MIA Game of the Week. And looking at these teams so far this year, some great looks inside that huddle for Archbishop Spalding. And that was talking to Kyle Schmidt, and he's the guy that does the special teams. And look, you know, there's a couple things we may have to try on special teams, yeah. maybe steal a possession to keep ourselves in against a team that – you know, they admit it, you know, look, St. Joe's, they're better than we are, but we don't think we're that far away from them. And that was kind of the, the key point, I think. Definitely, and Coach Schmidt's group, confident in their ability coming into this one. You don't put a team like this on your schedule on homecoming if you <laughs> have any question about, you know, how you can compete with this group. So I know special teams is something that both of these coaching staffs are definitely honing in on uh, this week getting prepared. And St. Joseph's is a phenomenal special teams squad. Blocked punts all the time. And they actually had one was key in staying in their game against IMG Academy, the opener down at the uh, down in Ocean City, New Jersey. They lost to IMG, ranked above them in the standings. I think right now in the USA Today, it's IMG sixth and St. Joe's is eighth in the nation. And IMG actually had a punt blocked for a touchdown wow. that, that St. Joe's ran back, and then also St. Joe's. Ran a fumble back inside the five-yard line. So, really turn that game around with special teams and defense. Shoulder, boots it away. Will be returnable. And it's Aaron Aguebe up the middle trying to get to the outside, and he'll be brought down at the 30, and a flag comes down. So, it looks like it will likely be on Spalding, and the good return will be wiped out. I know Webbe definitely wants to have that back. I have a feeling, Jeremy, we'll be calling his name a lot tonight. The big play threat for this Archbishop Spalding offense. He is a home run threat every time he touches the football. Got the 
see him make a couple of big plays in the opener. Him and Malik Washington, just a tremendous rapport uh, between those two. So the football world's a small one. I just got a text from a former mm -hmm. high school classmate, R Renee Sturgill, was her name is Grace now. Her son, I believe, plays over at Loyal Blakefield. What? Son grew up with the Guebe. So wow. You well, know, there it is. He small knows. World, small world. He knows world. firsthand <laughs> just how electric this young man is. Here it is, Malik Washington, the Maryland command. Only a junior, though, so still plenty of time in his as that one's going to be outside and dropped. A little bit off the mark looking for R.J. Newton. Couldn't connect. Yeah, R.J. Newton, take a look at this touchdown again. As you see it. Good blocking. Pretty big hole there for James. So second and ten. Kaufman in the backfield along with Caden Curtis. Kaufman kind of there, H back, going to do everything. Washington back to throw, looking long and just over the reach. Looked like Newton might have had a step on Devon Willie, but couldn't hook it up. You mentioned it. Just overthrown there by Malik Washington, and that's, that's a part of his game, Jeremy, that these college coaches, these Power 5 schools love. He could really, really throw the ball deep. Tremendous touch. Again, feels like a big third down already. Don't want to get the ball right back to St. Joe's after a methodical drive right down the field. Man comes in motion, Washington. As man slips, probably a good thing, as that didn't look like it was on target anyway. Wow. Again, going for Newton. Yes, yeah, tough opening series for Malik Washington in this offense. You mentioned they get into a third and long situation. St. Joe's only rushing three, dropping eight back in coverage. We'll see if that's the game plan they go with here tonight. Cooper Welch to punt it away. Back deeps David Washington. Remember, St. Joseph's is masterful at blocking punts. Something Kyle Schmidt knew his team had to get the ball away. And they will this time as well. It's a pretty good kick as they'll pin on the sideline, but that's going to be a flag. And again, another miscue by Spalding is coming down the field, making contact too early. It's Justin Snell, the sophomore. And Jeremy, it seems like early on penalties, one of the early storylines in this football game. Whoever can play the cleanest brand of football for the rest of this thing may have the upper hand. And again, when you're looking for the team to be the one to pull the upset, as yeah. call coming here. Kyle Schmidt trying to plead his case, but to no avail. So we're going to call a holding. Well, that can't be it. it. Has to be the interference on the the kick. We saw the personal foul signal at first, and I thought I saw a hold signal, which didn't make any sense. So they will mark it off. And still awaiting the march off. All, looks like all three officials trying to talk this one out. I got to get to the bottom of this thing. So it will be a 15-yard penalty, so it will be the fair, fair catch interference. So... St. Joe's back out, not the start that Spalding wanted. <laughs> At this point, got to find a way to get themselves off the field. Don't want to go down 14-0 against a powerhouse like the Hawks. West the back in the backfield. He'll take the handoff, going around the end, got a lot of room, cuts it back, big stick, and it's the still up. Couldn't get him to the ground. I thought the way everyone scrambled it might be a loose ball, but... West just not going down. No, he is not. And they continue to run behind big number 75, Christian Leonard, and big number 69, J.P. Stribber. So they're getting on the edge at will here as you take another look at it. See, not much. The yards before contact is, is really staggering here because he wasn't really touched to. He was three or four yards down the field. It's so only a nine-yard gain. Thought he might have got past the sticks, but West goes out. Phillips back in on a second and one. On five minutes to go in our opening quarter. As now Jones is going to take it himself and get the first down as he runs over a man 
gets out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Jones, big, thick kid. College coaches right now comparing him to Jalen Hurts and Russell Wilson style of quarterback because of the build. But one thing you notice here early in this first quarter, Jeremy, he is not afraid to lower the shoulder uh, as physical of a runner as they come, man. Samaj Jones took over for Ohio State's Kyle McCord, the previous quarterback before him, actually as a sophomore and just said all kinds of pressure on him. Tim Roken admitted it, said, look, it was tough for him to get through at that point. And making a move, but this is going to come back on a hold as David Washington has a gain of seven, but it's going to come back. Tell you, Linnell, it's one of those things, obviously, you want to keep the keep the balance right now, but it seems like every time they go to the screen passes, they can't block it cleanly. Yeah, it's tough. I know they try to run a bunch of different things off of this RPO action. As you mentioned, though, Coach Roken pretty adamant about the penalty situation coming into this one. So That's one thing as Spalding runs a 3-3-5, so it really helps against teams that throw the ball a lot. Yeah. Sometimes can be susceptible to the run, though they've done well against it from what they've said. So ball now back to the 35-yard line as Jones will keep up the middle, spun down after a big hit and a little bit of extracurriculars in the backfield. And good job by the officials to not throw a flag on either one as it appeared that Oliver and Stewart got into it. And Stewart kind of did the hands up back <laughs> off. That Khalil Stewart transfer kid that has learned a lot in a short amount of time. They're really thrilled with his, his football intelligence. Showed it right there. Got to yeah. get that penalty on those D linemen. Those <laughs> dumb D linemen like you and me. Yeah. Second and 15. Need to get the ball down to the 16-yard line for a first down. Handoff goes around the end. That's Sanchez, and Sanchez staying up. Yeah. He'll be brought down just short of the sticks. Looks like they had him. Actually, might have. They're going to be just short as the officials put up three fingers, but another big run for this St. Joe's backfield. Yeah, it's interesting, Jeremy. They are really making a concerted effort to get the football on the perimeter here. I don't know if we're going to see them move Keyshawn Flowers around to try to set a better edge, but – it is like a hot knife running through butter right now. Jones going to keep it himself around the end. He's hit, but he knocks off the hit contact and gets the first down. Looks like they had him stop short, but those strong legs pushes him past. Yeah, that's a better job, though, on that one by Spaulding. Setting the edge, the sophomore corner coming in. Justin Snell sticking his face in there. You're playing a team like St. Joe's that is going to be committed to the running game. Your cornerback's got to be willing to come up and run fit. West in there as the running back. Rob Novotny now in as a H-back. To the outside goes West. He'll slip down as he's brought down after a four-yard gain. It's a DeAndre Swift-like jump cut from Isaiah <laughs> West right there, man. Wow. One of the famous alums back with the Eagles now, DeAndre Swift. What a story that is, huh, Jeremy? Also, Alameda Zacchaeus also back with the in Philly with the Eagles. So second and six coming up. Jones hands it off. Here goes West. Cuts it back. What a move. And he will drag tacklers into the end zone. Touchdown, St. Joe's Prep. Another big run by a big back for the Hawks. Look, we're two former defensive linemen, so we're going to give the big boys some glory here. They pull big number 75, Christian Leonard, and he clears the way. Get a replay on that. He was like an elephant on parade, Jeremy, just moving. His coaching staff really excited about this sophomore and the development that he's had over his first offseason in the program. Shoulder on for the extra point. Yeah, again, that's... Very, very good lineman for this St. Joe's team. Providing some holes and let's take an advantage of it. His shoulder boots it through. And now a 14 to nothing lead for the Hawks. As they have come out, looked every bit 
As good as advertised. Yeah, their running game right now is it's explosive, and they're not doing too much with it. Not showing you a bunch of different looks right now, just getting on the perimeter with the power running game, pulling the center and the guard. And they're getting up to the second level and making life tough for these linebackers. Again, only the three, the three, three, five, only the three down linemen. Yeah. And a St. Joe's team that runs at a lot of different formations. And obviously the quarterback is always a threat to run it. And that makes it even tougher. Yeah, definitely. The big drive coming up for Spalding. Remember, they deferred. So they will get the second half kickoff. So I guess kind of the thinking if you're Kyle Schmidt is, can we get into the locker room down by seven? We'll yeah. be okay at that point. But if it gets a little bigger than that, it's going to be tough. Shoulder boots it away. And this one going to take Webe into the end zone, so a touchback. And that's something that Tim Roken told us, that shoulder's really been working on, you know, that extra leg strength to get those touchbacks, get that ball into the end zone. Yeah, definitely. Their special teams unit, we've talked about it already here in this broadcast. They spend about, he said, 20 minutes a day on this. And you see big number 75 right here. It's his block that really allows this thing to get into the end zone. Isaiah West showing off tremendous vision. Shout out to Christian Leonard on that one. So Washington hands it off. And squirting through for a nice gain is Caden Curtis. So going to the ground after three straight passes on the opening possession. And that'll help this Spalding offense ease into the football game. Nice run there on first. Going tempo again. They will give it to Curtis. And he'll be very close to the sticks. Only needed two. And they will move the sticks. Now this isn't an easy St. Joe front to run against, Jeremy. This is one of the best defenses in all of the country. When we talked to Coach Tim Roken. The inconsistencies is really what he's trying to get them to eliminate out uh, here on that side of the football, giving up the big play too much on occasion. Under two minutes to go in our opening quarter. Washington, quick swing pass. Curtis met by about three tacklers. Ball's loose, and St. Joe's with the football. Coming up with that one, Nick McGlynn after a big hit, and now a flag goes down. Wow. But if you're spawning right now, things couldn't be off to a much worse start. Had something go and then fumbled away off of a big hit. See another replay here. Yeah, St. Joe's not fooled at all by the screen. It looked like it was number one that ends up forcing the fumble. Emilio Agar, the Wisconsin commit. And that's part of the reason, not just the coverage skills, but the physicality as well. And yep. Agar puts his team in position for another score. Unsportsmanlike conduct. I think a little bit of chirping after the play by St. Joe's, but yeah. they're still in golden field position right here at the 30-yard line. Yeah, coach gave us a hell of a line to describe Emilio Agard. He said he wants to be the best and moves like it in his day-to-day -day routine. And Coming up with big plays like that, that's how you be the best, Jeremy. Most definitely. Interestingly enough, committed to Wisconsin. Of course, the team he's playing tonight, kind of the threads for Spalding look like Wisconsin <laughs> uniforms. So see some future drip. So maybe showing a little bit uh, on that game tape, Badgers can see it. So 14 nothing as St. Joe's really trying to blow this one wide open early after a pair of touchdown runs and quick pass out in the flat. A lot of room for West. Flag goes down as he'll be banged out of bounds. That looked like Keyshawn Flowers coming in to make the big stick. Keyshawn Flowers and Trent Gillis combining on it. Gillis, the first man on the scene. Mentioned it though, Jeremy. It, every time they go to the air, <laughs> seems like it looks a little off. A face mask this time on Spalding. <laughs> Not the clean game that Kyle Schmidt wanted to see his team play tonight. They're in danger of going down 21 nothing in the first quarter here. Obviously, you never want to get down by three scores in an opening half or an opening quarter, but when you got Malik Washington and the cast of characters that they have on that Spalding offense, you're never really out of it. 
exactly. But as you mentioned, you definitely want to stop the bleeding here early in this first half. First and goal from the 12-yard line. They can get a first down. Jones going to keep it. Getting to the outside. This time he'll be swallowed up by a host of Cavalier defenders as he may have lost a yard on the play. Delmar White once again doing an excellent job moving laterally down the line of scrimmage, not getting reached. You see it right there. They try to get on the perimeter. They've had a lot of success here in this opening quarter doing so. But watch number 30 here just continue to work his hands there, that wrestling background. Coming up, shedding the block, and makes a big-time tackle. So interestingly here, I think St. Joe's could let the play clock run out and go to the second quarter, but it looks like they're going to try and get a playoff here. Five seconds to go in the quarter as Jones, hard county, maybe just trying to get the Cavaliers to jump. They do not, so that will take us to the end of the first quarter. St. Joseph's prep up on Archbishop Spalding, 14-0. This is the MIA game of the week. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. have an opportunity to do well academically, athletically, but you also have an opportunity to do well vertically with the building between yourself and God. Like what more can you ask for? Back here in Severn, Maryland, as St. Joseph's Prep has looked as advertised so far tonight here on the MIA Game of the Week, leading Archbishop Spalding 14 0. And seconds and 11. Ball is spotted at the 13 yard line. Big, big time down here for the Spalding defense. You don't want to go down three scores here in the first half. It's time for one of these. One of these D1 commits, one of these D1 prospects to make a play, Jeremy. Hand off. West bounces to the outside, being tough to tackle, and eventually enough cloth grabbed by Archbishop Spalding to get him down after a gain of three. Yeah, Isaiah West, just a violent, nasty, tough physical runner. And each and every down, all 11 of the guys in red are going to have to rally to the football, as they did right there on that play. One of the things both coaches a little bit worried about was having to play against this level of opponent, yeah. things that might work against a lesser opponent. Do you kind of get into those holes? And a quick pass out to the flat and into the end zone, though a flag is down. Touchdown. Touchdown. As taking it in was David Washington, but will this one come back? Let's see what the penalty is. So holding on St. Joe's, so that's going to move it back and take the Washington touchdown off the board. Yeah, since the touchdown is being called back, perfect time to highlight Justin Snell coming down and taking on that block that may have been where the holding was called. Give these kids a lot of credit, Jeremy. It's really difficult to me to be a successful high school student athlete in today's day and age with all the distractions of social media, these guys out here, despite the score, they love football. If they do, it's a lot different than when I was playing, definitely, <laughs> even when you were playing yeah. only a few years back. Third and very long. Need to get it down to the two for a first down. Ball spotted right now. And about the 20-yard line, just inside of it. Let's see what St. Joe's calls for on this play. Quick pass out in the flat. And knocked out of bounds as Jones, Elijah Jones, with the catch and got out of bounds by Jaden Ships. And looks like St. Joe's will send out the field goal unit. 
Wow, so they end up marking them both way shy of the sticks. Saw on that third down, though. A little creative pressure package. Keyshawn Flowers being rushed off the edge. They move him around a ton in this 3-3-5 defense, but a big-time stop, Jeremy, for this, this Spalding defense. That's a win for Spalding there. Looks like Tim Roken might have just made sure that one was a, hey, let's make sure we yeah. keep the easy field goal here. As shoulder on and shoulder boots it through. So now 17-0 for the Hawks, but a bit of a stop for the Spalding defense. And one thing we have to mention for those who may have joined us a little bit late, Tyler Brown, the Liberty commit the safety, one of the leaders on this defense for Archbishop Spalding, went out maybe second or third play of the game when he was trying to tackle Samaj Jones, who tried to hurdle him. And I don't know from the looks of things, maybe a head injury, hasn't had the helmet on. But, again, tough tough break for him getting a chance to play in this big game yeah. here. Yeah, definitely, as you mentioned, highly productive guy, tremendous ball skills, seven interceptions. A season ago, Jeremy, so one of the leaders of this Spalding defense. If he's unable to return, it'd be a huge blow. They do have some depth back there, and really they do like to cross-train a little bit back there to get guys playing different spots, but obviously that's going to have that deep safety back there, especially in the 3-3-5, is going to be tough to fill that in. Shoulder on. Guebe back deep along with Curtis. And again, we'll end up in the end zone, so that first one a chance to return it. Ever since, shoulders put two in the end zone, and again, another scrimmage from the 20 for Archbishop Spalding. See what their attack is offensively. They tried to establish the ground game a little bit on that last drive. Always good to do because when you got a quarterback with a big arm like Malik Washington, the play action shots down the field always part of your arsenal. So spotting out. Down 17 nothing. Trying to get something going on offensively. They got a first down last drive and fumbled it away. And off to Curtis. No keep by Washington, and he's brought down. After a gain of five, give him six actually on the play. It's one of those things right now, I think, Linnell, you have to make that call if you're Kyle Schmidt. How much do you run him because yeah. he's so important as your trigger man? Yeah, 100%. But as he showed right there, he's got some wheels on him. There goes Curtis, and he will be stacked up as big Maxwell Roy, the junior out of Delran, New Jersey. Pulls him back at the line of scrimmage. Might have been a half a yard loss. Yeah, this defensive front for St. Joe's. You mentioned Maxwell Roy, the junior. It's a big space eater, man. Going to eat up at least two blocks down in and down out. St. Joe's stems on the front, maybe showing some pressure. And flag goes down for a sideline warning on St. Joe's prep, which I remember I used to play. That was kind of the co-word for stop talking more than yeah. the <laughs> sidelines. They weren't as concerned about you being too close. So third and five, need to get it out to the 30-yard line for a first down. Another big third down for Spalding. Quick pass, and again, can't hook up. Going for Newton over his head, and contact made by Agard. Looks like Spalding has to punt it away. Yeah, Emilio Agard, as you see him with the single shot here on the screen. I mean, just walks with a different type of bounce in his step, man. A lot of swagger that this kid plays with. The second big play that he's been involved in here in this first half. Just a bit off. Malik Washington unable to get into rhythm tonight. Kind of sailed a few balls. And here comes the punt block and almost blocked, but a good kick. Gets it away and a fair catch taken by David Washington inside his own 40-yard line. Yeah, Jeremy, look, that really big punt, but a play that could end up being huge because if you look at all the St. Joe's games, I mean, this is how the score flips and how these games start to get out of hand. These special teams miscues, I see they were uber close. Yeah, I don't know how Ramir Hardy didn't block that one. Yeah, got to lay out. 
He actually, I believe, he's the one that either return had the return or blocked it against IMG to get them on the board in that game. He actually had the return touchdown, which had to be a thrilling play for him. So St. Joe's prep back out. And Samaj Jones leads them out there. Now we have both top two running backs in, Phillips and West. As West, a wing back, if you will, as he goes in motion. They'll throw it out to him in the flat. Big chance for a big play here. Good tackle, bringing him down. And another flag, but behind the play. Yeah, they're gonna get they're gonna get Khalil Stewart. It's one of those ones when you watch the film tomorrow, he'll get an attaboy, but right now you gotta talk to him. Can't can't play after the whistle, but that was a tremendous finish. So that will now it's spotted. Yeah, could end, yeah, could end up being a huge play for this Spalding defense, getting them backed up behind the chains for the first time really in this game. So I think they're going to call this another post-possession. So I don't think he had the first down. So I think this will move it back 15, so it should be a, a first and 15, I believe. See K.J. Towns talking to Khalil Stewart there saying, come on, man. Towns, the senior out of Lower Gwinnett, Pennsylvania. Got some group of five and FCS offers. Of course, you know, any kid coming out of either of these schools is going to be very, very uh, interest level for yeah. schools in the Patriot League, the Ivy League, some of those high academic schools. So this will move it back to the... Original line of scrimmage. That's interesting. They're still going with this three down front for Spalding here. Bring a few more guys up as they send Phillips in motion. Now taking up the middle. A lot of room to run is Jones. Jones to the outside. He'll be brought down, but not until the 35-yard line. Didn't have anything in the pass game, so he took it with the run. Yeah, Jones showing the growth that he's made being in this offense last couple of years as the starter. Good protection up front from the St. Joe's offensive line. You see his head go from left to right, and then boom, he makes the decision this time to get up out of there. Spalding sent a blitz and just took it up the middle, no one home. So first and 10. That's a handoff, that's the outside, goes Phillips. Phillips cuts through one man. Brought down by two more after a gain of five. It's another five-yard gain. And it feels like because Spalding held him to five that it was a good defensive stop. But once again, they do a tremendous job getting on the edge of this defense. That time they pulled the left guard, Khalil Stewart. The transfer, we talked about him earlier. He's had to learn a lot in a little amount of time. They have high hopes for this kid. Right now, you'd have to think that defense for Spalding has to be tired some long time consuming drives. There's Jones, will swing it out, finds his man, and Jones will be brought down, no gain on the play. It's a really good piece of tackling by this Archbishop Spalding defense. It's a heck of a play design on the flip side from St. Joe's. Widening that Spalding defense, getting their guys the ball on the perimeter in space. It's another really good play by Justin Snell, the sophomore DB in open space. He's been in on a couple of different plays here. Denzel Felder checks in as the tight end, so maybe four down territory here and a timeout. Actually going to be a, an officials, an officials timeout or going to be a timeout? It's like an injured player. So, yeah, they're going to bring Jones off the field, Elijah Jones, that is, senior out of Norristown, Pennsylvania. Bring both teams back out, get a quick water break during the injury timeout. You see the Spalding cheerleaders there. Of course, before the game, we were doing getting everything going, yeah. and, and before our on field responsibilities, it got loud and it got exciting. Yes. I know the Spalding folks would love to get the student section something to cheer about 
Hadn't been a lot so far. That's a big third down here, Jeremy. They're just, looks like St. Joe just outside the field goal range of their kicker, so. Headed off to West, bows it back. Flag goes down and a big hit as Flowers leads the way. What you were calling for, Linnell, that yeah. gang tackling, they get back and stop West for a loss. Now question will be, will Kyle Schmidt take the penalty? See it right here. Nice job here, big number 78, getting inside of the left tackle, sets the edge, and then allows Flowers to use his speed and come play cleanup. Kel Oliver, the junior. And see how they sort this one out. They're going to decline it. So they will take. They got to find the spot of the actual play. So now a fourth and 14, and St. Joe's leaving the offense out there. It's a big chance for the Cavaliers to get some good field position here with a stop. And now timeout for <laughs> Tim Roken. And big fourth down coming up. See what happens after this. Quick pause from Baltimore. This is the MIA game of the week. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Here's see Tim Roken. Of course, he took over the program from Gabe Infante as the head coach. 2019, the success has kept up. Of course, he brought Coach Infante on, or Coach Infante brought him on back when they took over back in 2011. Looking long, Jones is going to pull it down. Look to run, it'll be brought down as Spalding gets the stop they've been looking for. Huge stop there. Ty McVicker, one of the big impactful defensive linemen for Spalding. That was huge there, Spalding sending pressure. Nice job in the back end, sticky in coverage, forcing Jones to hold on to the football a little bit longer than he wanted to. And a heck of a job by these defensive linemen hustling downfield. No, so it's usually the analyst that has their all whatever team. He's on my all team because we were told he's about 5'6". A uh -huh. little shorter than I am. I didn't <laughs> think I'd ever see that. A nose tackle shorter than me. He's a playmaker. Quick pass over the middle, incomplete. And a great play by Anthony Saka, the high-level recruit. Son of former Penn State quarterback Tony Saka. That one was intended for Aguebe. Yeah, we talked to Coach Roke, and he said, look, straight up, this is our best defensive player. Kid just keeps working and working. This is his first year playing full-time linebacker, Jeremy, so it's impressive what he's done. Yeah, started off as a safety. They've moved him to linebacker. He's got a lot of skills. Washington looking, got a man wide open. It's Agwebe, and he makes the catch at the 50-yard line. First down, big play, first of the game for Spalding. Yeah, that time St. Joe's sending pressure, and that's the danger of doing so when you go up against a quarterback like Malik Washington. He'll make you pay. Spalding goes quick. Quick pass and almost picked off by Agard. As it looked like the middle of the defense had issues, they weren't ready, but Washington went to the outside, and Agard had a lot of green grass in front of him. He makes the catch. Yeah, this is Emilio Agard, man, Every as advertised, right? Everything Coach Roken told us about him. He's living up to it. It's his third big play of the first half. A lot of energy that he plays with as a football player, and that could be infectious for the rest of this defense. So second and ten, ball just inside the 50. Again, St. Joe's late to line up. Washington has to get it out quickly, finds Newton. 
Newton will drag tacklers forward very close to first down yardage, might be just short. I know Malik Washington's gotten off to a slow start, but that play right there, an example of why he's a four-star quarterback. Pressure comes, dropping the arm angle, takes it on the chin, and delivers a strike. And jumping off sides, I believe it's going to be St. Joe's. It will It'll be Sean Stratz, whose father is the defensive line coach and defensive coordinator. So that's going to be a double tough ride yeah. home tonight. <laughs> yes, it is. Nice shot of this Spalding crowd. Finally getting something to chair about here as they're moving the football here. Spalding going tempo here. Now Washington calming it down. Guys all looking over to the sidelines. Plays come in. So Newton and Agwebe to the left. Kaufman out there to the right. Washington has time. Now he'll pull it down, throws it out, and will it be complete? They'll say it's a catch. As Ledbetter, David Ledbetter, the freshman, able to bring it in for a gain of five as that St. Joe's sideline is hopping mad. They thought it was incomplete. Yeah, that's just a ridiculous throw from Malik Washington. Washington gets it out quick to Aguebe again. And guess who? Saka is there to snuff it out for a four-yard loss. You see it. They got him playing at the linebacker position, but right there, those coverage skills on full display. As you see this throw from Washington. It's a heck of a catch, too. A lot of freshmen going up and getting it. So huge third down again for Spalding. Had something going. Really got to pay this one off with points. You'd have to think to try and stay in the game. Down 17. Quick pass, finds Aguebe, takes it up the middle, and he's very close Ooh. to the sticks. Might be just short. And that might have been a touchdown saving tackle there from this St. Joe's defense. You give Aguebe a crease, he normally makes you pay. And movement up front, and I think that's going to be on Spalding. Tried to go quick, and it will be a false start. That's a huge blow right there. Man, yes it is. Caden Leonard, a little bit over anxious, trying to blow that Hawks front out of there. And now instead of a fourth and inches, looking at a fourth and six. Got to think he's going to leave the offense out here still. I don't think it changes their plans. Definitely just makes the fourth down much more difficult to convert here. Huge swing play right here, folks. Ball can keep the drive alive. If not, St. Joe's with the momentum and plenty of time to go down the field again for another score. Washington, quick pass, finds his man, and he has a first down. Knocked out of bounds. That'll again be the freshman, David Ledbetter. David Ledbetter. The freshman showing a good rapport there with Washington, getting to the sticks, and the ball was out before he even turned around. And his brother Antonio, a backup. Running back, and again, Strats will jump off sides. That's two on this drive. See it right here from Washington. Quick three-step drop. Good protection up front. Puts it on him. So now a first and five after the encroachment. Now Washington going to tell his guys, hold up. Well, he changes the play. Coming up on two and a half minutes to go in the half. Washington. Throws it deep, looking for Webbe. almost Man. makes an amazing one-handed catch. A little bit of contact in the back deep as well, no call. Yeah, the pressure was coming here on Washington. She had to throw that one fadeaway jumper style, as you see it right here. They run a game up front, big number 45, Sean McNulty providing the pressure, and Iguibe tried to make sports center top 10 with that one. Got a hand on it, but couldn't bring it in, so... Second and five. Spalding looking for their first score of the game. Washington. And again, contact, but they're going to say that one is uncatchable. And it looked like Willie had hands all over Ledbetter, but no flag. Yeah, a little bit of a miscommunication there, it looked like, from Washington and Ledbetter. So you'd have to think four down territory here. 
even though the field goal would cut it down to a two possession game. And we're gonna need touchdowns to pull an upset on, off against St. Joe's. They got a Weebay lined up in the slot here. Let's see if they try to get a matchup with him as they throw him in motion. Washington finds him. Does he throw it too low? He does. Had wow. him wide open. Igwebe looking up like he got the catch, got the hands under it, but official thought differently, and that's a tough one there if you're watching and had the first down and couldn't make the completion. We for sure that that is the call? The offense is out there still. So fourth and five coming up. Need to get it down to about the 12, 13-yard line for a first down. Kaufman in motion. Looks like Saka staying with him all over the field. Washington fades, got a Gwebe, but it's knocked away. Guess who? Agard comes from his corner position and gets a hand on it to knock it away and denies Spalding. That's just tough. I know Malik Washington going to want that throw back. Really nice job by Gwebe winning at the top of this route. It's Washington. One of those throws, you just got to drop it in the bucket. You see Guibay behind the defense. Tough catch to make. Tell you what, phenomenal instincts there by Emilio Agard coming off of his man, getting a hand on it to knock it away. So huge swing right there. Looked like Spalding might be going in to cut it down to a 10-point game. Now plenty of time left for this St. Joe's team to go and put more points on the board. Remember, Spalding gets the second-half kickoff. Quick pass, finds his man. Looked like a knee went down, but the official said no as Hardy made the catch. Amir Hardy, one of these junior receivers that are kind of next in line for this St. Joe's program. Five-yard gain. Right now, Jones taking his time. Back to throw again, has a man wide open. And jumping out of bounds is Raymond for a big gain. Oh, mix up in the coverage right there. Yeah, the WVU commit known for his deep threat speed. That time wide open underneath. Jaden ships in coverage, giving him a good seven-yard cushion. And Samaj Jones taking full advantage of that. Clock stops as... Raymond smartly went out of bounds. Phillips goes in motion, fake it to him. Now the tunnel screen back the other way, flagged down as Sanchez brought down after a five-yard gain. But let's see what happens on the flag. You see Raymond down there. That's why you don't want to lose. No, they do not. Yes. Pick the flag up. So, no flag and a gain of six. Yeah, Jeremy, it's really cool to see what Samaj Jones is able to do at the line of scrimmage and the command of this offense that he now has. Looks like a veteran out there. So now Jones, instead of looking at two sticks, looking at four yards, he's going to pull it down and run, and he's going to be swarmed under by that front for Spalding. Flowers in the middle of it. As a timeout called by St. Joe's. And Mick Vicker also part of it again. He is a guy that they talk about him, Linnell, tough. As his coach says, Spalding football in a picture. Yeah. Small, quick, incredibly active, as tough as we have. Yeah, 110%, man. To be 5'6". Regularly playing behind the line of scrimmage, he's been a problem. We'll take it to break here on Ramon. Right, you have an opportunity to do well academically, athletically, but you also have an opportunity to do well vertically with the building between yourself and God. At what more can you ask for? So after the sack, it actually they're going to spot that one. Only about a loss of three on the play, so a third and seven, let's say. You see Kyle Schmidt right there. Got the 
marker in his headband there and his hat bill. Always a good look. The big play here can spawn and get St. Joe's off the field. Jones pulls it down again. This time he's got some room to run. Has a receiver wide open, but he can't find him over the head of Washington. Would have been six. Instead, that's going to be fourth down, and St. Joe's will send the punt unit on. Big stop by the Spalding defense, but as you mentioned, nice job by David Washington working the scramble drill. Plenty of time to throw for Jones, and it was a nice job by him keeping his eyes downfield, just unable to connect. So Agwebe will go back deep, shoulder, just like Welch for Spalding is also the punter, his first punt of the day. Spalding coming after it, gets it away. Short kick, and Agwebe going to tell everyone to get away from as it takes a Spalding bounce back across the 35-yard line, down on the play by Leo Ritchie. So good field position if you're spotting to take one last shot at getting some points before the half. Yeah, they get the football coming out of the locker room. So this would be huge if they were somehow able to march down this field in 58 seconds. We've seen them try to get Iguibe involved here early, Jeremy. He is the deep threat of this Spalding offense. See if they can get him matched up. We've seen today, we've seen Sacker really traveling with Kaufman. They know that they really like to get it to that H-back. He's such... A tough matchup for everyone, but Saka can match him step for step. So they've had to go to some different spots, and one of them has been led better today. Yeah. The freshman's had a few big catches already. Guebe also has a couple chances, a couple catches also had the chance for the touchdown, if not for a little less arc than ideal on the ball and a great play by Agar. Here we go, 58 seconds left to go in the half. St. Joe's leading 17 to nothing as Washington trying to pull off a two-minute drill here. Finds Newton. Newton cuts back inside instead of getting out of bounds. And they're going to not take the time out. Yeah, Washington really able to thrive in these situations on that one. He knew what they were in coverage-wise, and Newton was getting it the whole way. So losing some precious seconds there. Again, they'll throw it his way, and again, Agard almost with a pick six. <laughs> this is Emilio Agard, man, fearless at the cornerback position. Jumping that route. Luke Washington's got to be careful. Agard showing no fear out there on the perimeter, whether it's Newton, Nick Wiebe, making his presence felt. It's one thing Tim Roken said. They're throwing more at Agwebe, excuse me, at Agard this year than they really have in the past. Those teams stayed away from him. Washington pulls it down. A lot of room to run. He's going to get out of bounds after a gain of around 10, maybe a little bit more, down to the 45. And most importantly, he stops the clock. Yeah, good recognition there from Washington. And kudos to this Spalding offensive line as well, providing him with ample time. Washington make a good decision to get out of the pocket. Washington gets rid of it quickly, but you're right. The offensive line has done a good job today against a pretty good St. Joe's front. Washington has to scramble. Keeps the eyes downfield. Now just take a little bit and get out of bounds. And now a flag goes down. Just a silly penalty. If that's a hold on. I think it was on Ledbetter. I think it is. That's on Spalding. And it is. Wow. That's tough. I want to see them get better in the scramble drill, Jeremy. That one, that time led better a freshman, I think, got to block him too early. Washington had no choice but to run. So that'll move it back. First and 16, ball just across the 49. 16 seconds to go, and Kyle Schmidt, Takes a timeout. He's not happy with our referee. I think he was expecting the clock to stop and not run. He's very animated right now. You can see it right there. They're talking it over. Yeah, look, it's critical down. 
critical moment in the game. As we've mentioned, Spalding going to get the football coming out of the half. So quite literally, Jeremy, probably the most important drive of the football game right now for Spalding. So it will be a timeout for Spalding. And again, he just did the arm signal, so it has to be. I think he was thinking it wasn't going to start. So I'm going to bring everybody back out with 14 seconds left to go. Down 17 to nothing. Looking for some points here for Spalding. Question is, going to need a heck of a chunk play right here. They still have a timeout, so if they do get tackled in the field of play, they can take it. First and 15 now. See the St. Joe's corner giving a lot of cushion. So now, come over and say 17 seconds. 17 seconds, he just put up the one, then s seven fingers. I believe that's what he's looking for. So that changes things a little bit, Linnell, a little more yeah. time, but you got to get a big, deep shot now. Yeah, 100%. These corners well aware of it. Two deep safeties for St. Joe's. Over the middle goes Kaufman, makes the catch with Saka draped all over him. And a timeout called by Spalding with 11 seconds to go. As a second and four coming up, ball be just inside the 40. That's a heck of a catch there from Kaufman. Love the play design too. Trying to get the attention of this St. Joe's defense to the perimeter, and then they throw it back across the middle of the field. Really good catch. I mean, Saka's literally on his back. Yeah. I think the officials might have missed that one, yeah. but now the then that's got to be a little bit different for them, Linnell, is the fact that you know with Kaufman you got to scheme normally all these things. Where if you're St. Joe's, here's Saka, yeah. and he is like the perfect guy to cover <laughs> a, a Kaufman. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a matchup in the second half that we'll be watching under a microscope. Two really good players that. Are definitely going to be playing big time football at the next level. Well, Kaufman actually will be playing lacrosse. He is a UMBC lacrosse ah. recruit. So, of course, doing as many Georgetown lacrosse games that I've done, a lot of those guys can play college football yeah. too. <laughs> it's a mindset, Jerry. 11 seconds to go in the half. Washington finds his man over the middle. It's a Guebe up to the 30. They're going to run up and they're going to take the timeout. So, instead of the spike, Kyle Schmidt takes the final timeout of the half. So question now will be exactly how they will play this one. With just seven seconds left, I don't think you got time to get it across the sticks and spike it. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know if you have time to go Hail Mary here and get another playoff or, or deep shot, I guess, as it were. Yeah. And the other issue, Linnell, is St. Joe's is so good at blocking kicks. Those right. long kicks are always a problem, too. Yeah, definitely. We'll see. They try to work something toward this left sideline with Newton. Trying to use his big-time frame. They're getting soft coverage over here, so we'll see if that's where they go with it. Here we go, Washington. Pressure comes, gets rid of it. Hook and ladder, and getting to the outside and knocked out of bounds with one second. Question is, do they give them the one second or do they say the clock runs out? Wow. Official's going to talk it over. And it's always tough like this with no replay. St. Joe's is on the field. They want to get off the field. Yeah, I'm sure they do. And are they going to give them one second? And... I think St. Joe's, they were going to run off the field. Now one of the officials is holding them. And I think that's going to be it for the half. So that's 
Interesting play, but that's always going to be a thing. It's not it's not the college level yeah. or the pros where you can go back and review it, put time on. It's kind of on whatever happens, and that was a tough one. It may have been one second, but, again, a, a tough play to end the half on if you're Spalding. Yeah, and the officials may have been influenced by the St. Joe sideline just running <laughs> off the field. I mean, that'll make the call and make a decision for you, so. Well, at the half, it's St. Joe's up on Spalding, 17-0. Cavs get the second half kickoff. Got a little thing going, but they got to get more in the second half. They're going to come back and pull the upset. You're watching the MIA Game of the Week. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you are always part of something bigger. You have an opportunity to do well academically athletically but you also have an opportunity to do well vertically with the building between yourself and God at what more can you ask for homecoming here at Spalding now the Spalding dance team gonna do their routine Right now, let's check them out. Let's hear it one more time for the Cavalier dance team. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You will become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you are always part of something bigger. You have an opportunity to do well academically athletically but you also have an opportunity to do well vertically with the building between yourself and god at what more can you ask for Here with Jeff Parsons, the Director of Alumni Relations for Archbishop Spalding. Jeff, I'm so impressed by tonight, the weather withstanding, so many folks here. What are some of the, uh, first off, your impressions with a night like tonight? 
uh, you know, it's 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 awesome to see even with the weather. And we were watching the we- uh, weather all day, and you know, to see the turnout we have. And we had we just had 150 people at alumni tailgate, and it's good. Life is good. Everybody's behind it. Everybody's enthused. Everybody's excited. So we're very excited. Yeah. Something like this at a place like Spalding, where there's such a connection with alumni. What kind of goes into a night like this for you? Uh, you know, it's 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 the planning. It's the reaching out and talking to people and. You know, when we get our alums back to see this atmosphere, like they keep coming back. You know, they, they come back and they're like, man, look at these stands. And, you know, we, we had a couple, I was talking with a couple guys off the 2002 championship team earlier today, and they were talking about, you know, how much fun it was and how, you know, just the re- remembering and the recollection of everything. So, you know, we're really excited with where we are and what we built, and it, it's awesome. What are some of the events this weekend of note? Uh, honestly, it, it's, we had the big pep rally today. Um, a lot from an alumni standpoint, really, it's just the tailgate that we do tonight. Um, we had the alumni tailgate this evening. We, you know, like I said, we had 150 people show up, which was awesome considering the weather. <laughs> um, you know, everybody's like, "You're moving inside." I was like, "No, we're not moving inside. We'll be great. It'll be outside. It'll be fantastic." <laughs> um, you know, uh, we had, um, you know, we have the dance obviously tomorrow night. Um, and, you know, we're just kind of getting through it, and we're doing. We do a lot of other alumni events um, other times of the year around it. So yeah. One last one for you. You were formerly the AD here. The growth of this place, not only on the field but off. How? What does that mean to you? Oh, I'm so proud of it. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a 1995 grad of the school. Um, I've been here for 22 years. I spent 11 years as the AD. Um, it means a lot to me just to see how well the school is doing, how well the athletic departments are doing, the athletic department is doing in general. You know, uh, Mr. Mellinger is doing a fantastic job. The coaches are doing a fantastic job. I'm proud of the kids. It's an awesome thing. Can, awesome. You, can you turn this rain off? I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Jeff, th- my hairs are getting wet, man. <laughs> Jeff, thanks so much. Of course, thank you very much. That's Jeff Parsons. We'll be right back with more halftime coverage after this. Here with Jeff Parsons. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. You have an opportunity to do well academically athletically, but you also have an opportunity to do well vertically with the building between yourself and God. And what more can you ask for? It's halftime here from Archbishop of Spalding, and we're pleased to be joined on a homecoming with the athletic director of Archbishop of Spalding, Mr. John Mellinger. John, how you doing, my man? It's an awesome night. I'm really glad to be here. I wish the rain would hold off a little bit more, but we're going to have some fun. I was about to say a little bit of rain, but it doesn't stop the overall mood for tonight. You guys bring in another nationally ranked opponent. When we talked to you earlier in the season, you mentioned this tougher schedule that you guys were going to go through. How do you think the team's handled it? I think the team's handled it really well. I mean, we're we're a very, uh, an old team. We've got a lot of adversity. We've got a lot of, you know, wins under our belt, but ultimately we want a tough test. So this is a really tough test. A tough test indeed. Alumni, a big part of this weekend for you guys. What do they bring to the table for you all today? Well, I think what really makes the environment here on campus is, is the students. You know, they bring the juice every week, you know, that we're here in town. And, you know, it's really awesome to get the alumni back and, you know, have them get up in the stands there and join their student body. You guys got Maryland Terrapins head coach Mike Loxley in attendance. Knowing that you guys are putting out that caliber of player, what does it mean for the program moving forward? Well, I think what it does is it shows where the program's uh, gone and, and, and where it can continue to go and grow. And so we were excited that he wanted to come out and, and watch this matchup, and there's a lot of talented players out there that, you know, he wants to come see. John, appreciate you giving us some time as always, my man. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. You have an opportunity to do well academically, athletically, but you also have an opportunity to do well vertically with the building between yourself and God. And what more can you ask for?
back here at Archbishop Spalding as the Cavaliers trailing the St. Joseph's Hawks. 17-0. Jeremy Huber, Lionel Willingham back with you. Time to take a look at our first half highlights in this contest. And again, early on, the running and passing of Samaj Jones were big for this St. Joe's team. Yeah, they were making a concerted effort to get Jones, West, and company on the edge of this Archbishop Spalding defense. Want to see Spalding in the second half set a better edge, but a physical running style here from St. Joe's here in the first half. That was West. Banging it in there. Of course, Samaj Jones also scored a touchdown in the first half. 14 to nothing. They came out early on and imposed their will. Nice catch here by Jamison Kaufman. And got the drive down close inside the 20, but unable to hook up on a fourth down. But you can see in this first half, Washington, yeah. the skill set is there, obviously. Yeah, 110% on this one. You see him scrambling. No more for his ability to hurt you within the pocket. But I think tonight he's been off on a couple of throws. But the maturity of this young man on full display as you see the hook and ladder here to end the half. His maturity, though, we'll see if he's able to bounce back in this second half. Down 17. Coach Loxley in attendance. This is a big-time performance for him in this program. Take a quick look at a couple stats from the first half in this one. You look at it, obviously, Spalding with the edge on the pass on the run. St. Joe's really running it as well as you would expect. Yeah, when we talked to Coach Roken during the week. He said, look, we'll be open and honest about it. We're 60-40 run pass split. We're not hiding about running the football. We want to beat you up at the point of attack and get our speed guys on the perimeter, and they've done a heck of a job doing that in this first half. So ch chances for Spalding to come back in the second half on the arm of Malik Washington. We'll see what they can do. Come on back, second half after this. St. Joe's up on Spalding, 17-0 here on the MIA Game of the Week. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. You have an opportunity to do well academically athletically but you also have an opportunity to do well vertically with the building between yourself and God at what more can you ask for I still remember my first day you're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You will become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. You have an opportunity to do well academically athletically but you also have an opportunity to do well vertically with the building between yourself and god at what more can you ask for back in severn as St. Joe's Prep leading Archbishop Spalding 17 to nothing. Almost time for the second half as the teams are back on the field and warming up. And Linnell, as we look at some of the fans, trying to bring a little bit of support for their squad. If you're Spalding, what are you looking to do here in the second half? Yeah, I think it's huge. You want to get Malik Washington going, man. He is the straw that stirs the drink, so to speak, uh, for this football team offensively. It's been an up and down first half for him couple of throws he's going to want back but credit to St. Joe's defense this pass rush making life uncomfortable for him and then the corners on the perimeter I think something I tell Malik Washington is uh, pay attention to where number one Emilio Agard is he's had uh, his fingerprints all over this one had a near pick six at the end of the half so finding him and maybe throwing away from him maybe the game plan 
uh, for the Spalding offensive attack. That would be huge. Also, if you're St. Joe's, obviously we kind of talked about it. Pass game's been okay. The run games where they made their butter their bread, I guess you kind of want to stay with it. Yeah, definitely. They've done a nice job moving these guards and getting them out in space, using the athleticism. The sophomore Christian Leonard uh, escorted James in on one of these touchdowns, or Jones in on one of these touchdowns. And it, it's been impressive to watch these five work in unison. Anytime you commit to running the football the way that St. Joe's does, your offensive line uh, has to be an integral part of your football team, and it has been. Down Stewart, Steele, Leonard, Schreiber, and, of course, Felder as the tight end. The six or man. Extra tackle. <laughs> so he's the, those are the guys who've gotten it done up front. And right now, Spalding, of course, will get the second half kickoff. So really, I think if you were Kyle Schmidt, you have to be telling your guys, look, score and a stop. Yeah. That's it, 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 it's almost it's almost a baseball thought where you say, Hey, get a couple guys on, get a big hit. That's what this is right now. It's a score and a stop. We're right back into the game. Yeah, and going along the lines of what you said, the one play at a time mentality. You can't get 17 points in one play uh, here in this second half. So I want to see them try to establish the running game as well and get Curtis involved here so you can get this play action passing game going. You see Samaj Jones there. One thing that we actually didn't have a chance to talk to with Coach Roken. Um, bit of a celebrity relationship is okay. his girl his fiance uh, uh jessica byington um oh, boyington, okay. excuse me um the philadelphia reporter it's his fiance and i, I was actually you know I'm, I'm mr research i'm looking things up beforehand and and saw the fact and, and put in coach roken's name and that came up and i thought like, oh this is interesting <laughs> so didn't get a chance to ask him about it but obviously they're very happy and i've seen a few pictures of her with, at, at the state championships in in her yeah. so he's a big supporter so if she's watching how you doing jessica and your <laughs> your man is uh, coaching very well tonight and again great to talk to coach roken go to talk to coach schmidt as well we, we kind of referred to it earlier Coach Roken took over for Gabe Infante, who came in about 2011, was right with him. And he actually told us, he said, look, you know, I was kind of doing all I could to not be a teacher. I had a bunch of teachers in my yeah. family. wanted to make my own way. was working for the Army All-American game. Ended up kind of coming back, talking to some folks, talking to Coach Infante. Needed a coach. I decided to give it a shot. And now he's leading probably the best program in Philly and one of the best programs on the uh, East Coast, as for Coach Schmidt, I remember talking to him years ago doing a high school football show, and uh, he was, uh, you know, back then was still getting this thing going, and right yeah. now he's got it humming pretty good. And again, this game, kind of a measuring stick for his program. That's why they looked at it. So he's hoping that they can acquit themselves maybe a little better in the second half than he did in the first. As shoulder on to kick it away. Guebe back deep. Joined by Curtis. Again, St. Joe's in the white, Spalding in the all red, and we are underway in the second half. Another touchback by shoulder. So a scrimmage from the 20 for Spalding. Good to see Malik Washington and this high octane offense once more. They've been grounded here in this first half. No points. Don't know how many times they've been shut out in the first half this season, Jeremy, but this is definitely unfamiliar territory for this offense as you see Curtis right there getting him involved on the ground could definitely help coach Schmidt's squad they're low on the season 17 and their only loss against Imhotep Charter of Philadelphia Washington gets it out quickly incomplete great coverage on the play and not a lot of room to throw as Ryan McDonald was all over the receiver yeah, Ryan McDonald, another one of these juniors on this St. Joe's prep football team. A veteran that's got a lot of playing experience over his career. St. Joe's prep plays in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Unlike Archbishop Spalding, they actually participate in statewide playoffs that include private and public schools. Newton makes the catch. Agard right there. Tries to spin out of the tackle, but gets some more help from McDonald. Holds him to a gain of five. Yeah, what can't this kid, Emilio Agar, do? We've seen his ball skills already breaking up a pass in the first half. You see him right there in a one-on-one -on -one tackling situation with a big physical receiver in Newton, and he has no problem getting him to the ground. 
Third and five. Need to get it to the 30 for a first down. Quick pass, and does he make the catch? He does. Wow. That's Iguebe, another almost a little mini wheel route, able to get in there and make the catch. Yeah, similar to a play they tried to execute in that first half down in the red zone where Washington one-hopped it to him on a third down. That time able to hook up. Hand off up the middle. There goes Curtis. Can he split him? Has to cut it to the outside. Runs off a sack of Curtis. Still going. It'll be out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Big run for Caden Curtis. Caden Curtis popping the lid off of this Spalding offense. Big time run, and you saw it on that, just running away from people. I thought he was going to score on that one. Cut it back. Saka had a shot at him. Couldn't bring him down. Ball at the 20-yard line, so, and offsides again. This time, two Hawks jump. That hard count working for Washington and Spalding. That's the second time in, already in this football game, Jeremy, that we've seen Washington get one of these defenders to jump with this hard count. So imperative that the Cavaliers punch this one in. Looking at a first and five, handoff Curtis slips, brought down after a gain of one, was able to stay on his feet, got the hand down, didn't let the knee touch. I was surprised at the call on that one. You had three, re three wide receivers to the right of the formation, Ledbetter, Aguibe, and Newton, or in Kaufman, excuse me, all in single coverage. Maybe a half-yard gain there. Called second and four. Quick slant, and Agard again in there. This time, though, the flag will come down. And... Agard will be called for the pass interference. He got too handsy out there on the perimeter. He just got there a little too early. Tough yeah. to tell, but tell you, after we saw the play with Saka earlier where he was basically on Kaufman's back. Oh, goodness. <laughs> now, they let him play, huh? Agard talking it over with the official that called it, so. Balding may caught a little break there. First and goal. Ball will be at about the eight-yard line. Washington goes under center, fakes it to him, throws it, and it's going to be incomplete. Man. Willie with a heck of a play to knock that one loose from Kaufman. Would have been six. Malik Washington. I mean, that play is supposed to be a sack. If you're a normal quarterback and not an alien like Malik Washington <laughs> is, you normally get dragged down to the turf on that one. We can get the replay. He had the defensive lineman, Jeremy, wrapped around his lower half and puts an absolute dot on Kaufman. Kaufman able to bring it in again. Willie with a nice play and coverage to knock it away. Second down. Webbe goes in motion. Washington throwback screen as Kaufman had to go down and get it, and it's going to be a loss. We've seen this Spalding offense on numerous occasions trying to get the St. Joe's defense flowing one way and then throwing it back the other. That time St. Joe's not fooled. Really nice job corralling the, to the football. Loss of six on the play. As St. Joe's read that one like a book. Again, a critical drive to open the half here for Spalding. Probably going to be two down territory here. Four down territory, I should say. And incomplete. And this time, I think maybe more contact on Agar than before. And no flag. Newton beside himself, just sure that he was interfered with on that one, but no call. Yeah, it looked like that time he kind of had him wrapped up on the one. It looked kind of a bang-bang play and the one that actually got called on Agar. So now a big kick here for Cooper Welsh, 30-yard field goal, almost on the near hash, always a tough angle for kickers. Let's see if he can put it through. Remember, St. Joe's great at blocking kicks. Gets it up, and does he get it in? He does not. Welsh wow. misses it wide right, and St. Joe's with a stop to keep Spalding off the board. 
tough miss. It's a tough miss. It's one of those decisions. If you're Coach Kyle Smith, you see the miss and you're like, ah, you know, do, should we have gone for it on fourth down in that situation? I like the call, putting faith in your defense. A lot of football game left to go. So, I think right there, probably just trying to get something positive yeah. for his offense, get some points on the board. But the problem, Linnell, was really that second down play as yeah. St. Joe's read it well. And on top of that, kind of a tough throw from Washington. And that was what got them off track. So, Hawks defense with another stand. Two chances really for Spalding in scoring territory. Come up with points on neither of them. And Samaj Jones will lead him out. Fakes the handoff, keeps it. Off left tackle will be very close to the sticks and may have a first down. So nice job there on the left side, Khalil Stewart and KJ Towns sealing the edge. It's hard to play an offense like this if you're Spalding with all the window dressing that they do, the ball fakes. It's a tough group to prepare for. Phillips in the game. He'll take the handoff, bounces to the outside. Another big gainer of about 10 yards on the play. And you talked about it early in the game, getting to that edge. They've yeah. done that all night against this Spalding defense. Yeah, that time it was Keyshawn Flowers that got blocked inside. Nice job by the right tackle, J.P. Stribbler. Pinning him inside, allowing the back to get on the edge once more. It's going to be really tough to... Get your run fits down in a three-man front, and St. Joe's has taken advantage tonight. Handoff, Phillips, bounces through the hole. It looked like he might be bottled up for no gain. Instead, he gets five. Yeah, Kasim Phillips, Coach Roken descri described him as the bell cow of this group. Veteran kid, he's played major snaps over the past three seasons. And a guy that in the second half, Jeremy, really wears on defenses. He is the bigger of the backs. Both those guys in the backfield kind of came in as sophomores and made their mark early. This is West dragging tacklers. Now the offensive line will get involved, and they'll keep pushing him forward, finally getting him on the ground after a first down. They had him two yards short of the sticks. Instead, he goes two yards past. Yeah, he is a load to bring down, but you see the second effort there from the St. Joe's offensive line. That's the culture that they've established. Said in the first half, when you commit to running the football, it is a lifestyle choice. And blocking after the whistle and pushing your pile and pushing the back is part of what comes with it. First and 10, ball just across the 50-yard line at the 48. Again, a handoff. This time, West bounces to the outside, dragging more tacklers, though a flag comes down. And this should push the Hawks back. And it will on a hold. Curious to see who they get on the hold. Kudos to this offensive line for St. Joe's. And, and I tell you what, as much as we talk about Spalding not really playing a clean game, St. Joe's hasn't either. Now, yeah. that, that can go two ways. Sometimes say, oh, we're not being disciplined. Sometimes your opponent's pretty good too, and yeah. it puts you in those spots. So that's going to put the ball back. It'll be a 10-yard penalty, so back to the 42-yard line. So... 20 yards to go for first down. Big chance for Spalding to get St. Joe's off the field. West, you're back in the backfield. They'll swing it to him. And West gets loose and trot down. Nice tackle in the open field by Trent Gillis. But still, they get back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, nice job by the Spalding defense rallying to the football there. But as you mentioned, Getting West in space, he's made them pay all night long, whether it's been on the ground or on one of these swing passes out of the backfield. He's been a tough guy to bring down. Actually short of the sticks, about two yards short of the front part of the original sticks. So a second and 12 as they'll hand it off. Going around the end is Sanchez. Sanchez, plenty of room as he's brought down across the sticks. He rips off a gain of 15 for a first down. Sanchez, sort of the other guy in this St. Joe's backfield. You see the burst, though, that he runs with. 
That white blur that flashed across your screen, ladies and gentlemen, that's Sanchez getting on the edge of this defense once more. We talk about it being a lifestyle choice running the football. These receivers are 100% bought in uh, to blocking for this run game as well. So right there, a nice block from the wing on the edge. Sanchez to the outside, cuts it up. Has a gain of four on the play. It's, it's one of those styles, Jeremy, where it wears on you as the game goes on here. And right now, long drive here. Spalding defenders with their hands on their hips. Somebody's got to make a play. Yeah, we've seen Spalding try to rotate those three spots up front and keep those guys fresh, battling with that rugged St. Joe's offensive line. Jones keeps. To the outside, hit and brought down just short of the sticks. And Jones a little slow to get up. Now looking down at his leg. And now he's going to go back down. And that's not what you want to see if you're Tim Roken. Yeah, he took a big shot on that one. It was Keyshawn Flowers. Now pulling on his leg like it's a cramp, so hopefully that's all it is. But he did get hit low cleanly on the tackle but again that's always the one issue when you run your quarterback and especially as much as Jones runs for St. Joe's always that chance he could take that one hit and you know, we, we've seen it this year with Anthony Richardson yeah. you know you have to worry about the shoulder you have to worry about all the different things so hopefully if Samaj is okay he's built for it though thick kids strong lower half we saw a couple of runs in the first half, Jeremy, where he is a violent finisher, having the opportunity to go out of bounds but choosing to drop his shoulders on contact. Man, I love the mentality. Jack O'Connor, the listed backup, so he'll have to come in for at least one play. See how that changes things up for the offense. Jones still down. Looks like they're trying to work a cramp out like you alluded to. Again, it's a pretty relatively cool night. Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's 55 <laughs> degrees-ish. So it's not normally the night you would expect to see cramping, but if you're in a spot-long bus ride, maybe, you know, that could contribute yeah. to it. In a situation like this, Jeremy, where you have this extended pause in the action, who do you think it benefits? Because it feels like St. Joe's got all the momentum right now getting what they want on the ground. You know, I think I wouldn't worry so much about the pause. I'm worried about how healthy Samaj Jones yeah. is because he really, without him as that run threat, again, they still have got talent all over the place, Linnell, but I would have to think without him as a consistent run from the QB, and now he's going to get some help coming off. So let's see. Again, looks like he's putting weight on it, so hopefully it is just a cramp. But that could really change how they call this game. 100%. And if you're Spalding, it changes how you defend him. He is such a big part of what they do in the running game. It's rare, Jeremy, that you got to commit an entire defender to your quarterback. But So they will not go with O'Connor. They'll put David Washington back in the Wildcat with West next to him. And the snap goes over his head. He's going to have to jump on top of it and will just take the loss all the way back to the 40-yard line. Well... <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you go Wildcat. One of the risks. I know they love to get David Washington the football in space. Just super explosive. Always makes the first guy miss, but got to get the ball in his hands first. What do you think, Jeremy? Is that a drop or a high snap? A little bit of a high snap, and especially when you talk about a backup taking it who's not a quarterback. But yeah. And right now, Tim Rokin's going to punt this one away. I think things have kind of gone awry for him on this drive. He's going to take no more chances. Shoulder to punt it. Gets it away. And that's going to go and take a bounce, and then Agwebe is going to just fall on it. So ball will be outside the 10. But, again, tell you what, after those first two drives, this has kind of been an even-up game, Linnell. Yeah, it has. This second half, we've seen Spalding punch back, so to speak. They were able to move the ball in their last drive. 
still want to see this this passing game get dialed up. I don't know how much the rain has affected Malik Washington and company here tonight, but just looks just looks out of sync. Yeah, again, you talked about it, a few high throws on chances to move the sticks. And again, maybe some matchup issues when you got two real good cover guys in Saka and Agard. And this one again finds its way to Newton. Newton can't get loose. Agard didn't make the first tackle, got him on the second one. Emilio Agard. I know Coach Mike Loxley is here looking at a couple of his commits and guys that he's recruiting, but he's got to be paying attention to Emilio Agard. Just a do it all corner. Coming up, he's physical in the run game. He's contesting the catch point. Now Newton goes down. He's getting medical attention. As looks like Wine chatting with their coach and the receivers kind of huddled around their yeah. fellow pass catcher. Yeah, that would be a big loss. He's unable to return. Don't want to speculate, but he is a big-time member of this offense. Yeah, again, he's Holy Cross commit. Seven games, 28 receptions, 334 yards. More than capable. He's a different style of receiver, too, for this Spalding team. Different physical profile, long, wiry kid. He's up on his feet and, you know, possibly on that tackle. Yeah, might have gotten rolled up on. Get some of those Archbishop Spalding recruits. Of course, Keyshawn Flowers committed to Maryland. Malik Washington, four-star. He's a Maryland commit, but still has another year to go. Tyler Brown, Liberty. Of course, saw him get injured early in the game. Jaden Ships, a guy a lot of folks are looking for. And some more guys coming after them. Definitely a place to watch yeah, Severed sure. Maryland if you're a college recruiter. Second and nine. Quick pass behind. Agard almost picks it off. Looking for Ledbetter. Miscommunication there. That was big time pressure on the interior. Maxwell Roy once again. The space eater more known for his ability to eat up blocks. That time showing some pass rush juice as well. Yeah, Roy, as you mentioned, heck of a wrestler. 30 plus wins in both his freshman and sophomore seasons as a wrestler. It's pretty good, huh? Oh, it's great. Wow. Wrestling, the toughest sport there is. And he has done it very, very well. St. Joe's showing pressure. Washington going deep. has got a man. Ledbetter makes the catch. Banged out of bounds at the 35-yard line by Johnson. But a big play for Spalding. That'll put a big smile on Coach Schmidt's face. Seeing Malik Washington, little cover two hole, honey shot. Got a 30 yard gain. You see it right here again. Pressure comes off the edge. Pump fake, and look at this. Right in between the corner and the safety. Really nice throw from Washington, thrown off his back foot. So they spotted the ball at the 35. Now they'll move it up to the 40 on the sideline warning. Remember, they gave the yeah. warning, warning uh, in the first half. Let's see if Spalding can take advantage. Back to Ledbetter. Ledbetter, he'll have another first down on a 10-yard gain. Ledbetter, the freshman. Third or fourth reception here in this football game, Jeremy. And they've all gone for first down. Maybe what a star may be being born is again, St. Joe's jumps. This time it's Haskell, the defensive end. Strats is pleading his case, I think pointing at Washington. As we'll take another look at that catch now. Yeah, once again, nice job by Ledbetter. The run after the catch ability, as well as the receivers out there blocking in space, giving him an opportunity. So first and five, Washington scrambles out to his left, just going to take what he can get and get out of bounds. Yeah, St. Joe's once again trying to heat up Malik Washington. A little fire zone blitz there. Washington recognizes it, gets flushed out, and picks up almost first down. Four-yard gain on the play. Again, 
Offensive line doing a great job tonight against a pretty good St. Joe's front. It's a group that had six different starting lineups in the first six games. Finally got that settled in a bit. Kaufman makes the catch. He'll be brought down after a gain of six and a first down. Yeah, this Spalding offense really in sync right now. Washington doing a nice job pre-snap identifying what St. Joe's is doing. They're showing pressure. They're getting to their blitz beaters, and they're in sync right now. St. Joe's wouldn't line up. Now a little bit of a scramble drill. Webbe trying to go deep. Instead, Washington going to take it himself, sticks the ball out, might have the first down. Man, and Webbe on that one, pleading his case to the official. As Washington scrambled there, Guibe trying to work himself free in the scramble drill. And the St. Joe's DB got handsy. Spotting again, going tempo. They'll get it out in the flat to Spencer. Spencer brought down after a five-yard gain. Actually give him seven. See Coach Schmidt in this offense going with some tempo. Keeping St. Joe's on their heels. Yeah, Hawks having trouble lining up. And now Tim Roken going to put an end to these shenanigans <laughs> as he takes a timeout. Seen enough. We'll take a timeout as well. Spalding's got it going down 17-0. 243 left to go in the third quarter. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Back in Severn, Maryland, just south of Baltimore, at the BWI Airport. Spalding finally heating up, pressure coming, and Washington eludes it, looking down the field, and he's just going to be sacked out of bounds, didn't throw it away when he had the chance. He takes a seven-yard loss. Yeah, with Sean McNulty giving chase, it's no surprise. I mean, super high motor kid. They raved about him. We met with the staff during the week, just how hard he plays. Big time rugby player for the school as well. Cameron Smith made the tackle. Rare mental error for Washington. Could have thrown that one away. Still had short yardage. Instead has to go from 10. And he gets the throw there just barely as Aguebe went down to get it for a first down. Yeah, Washington cool as a cucumber. Under pressure, they're trying to heat him up. Not phased by the pressure at all. Delivers another strike. Ball inside the 15. Cavaliers need a score badly here. Looking deep, and is it going to be picked off? It is. McDonald comes up and makes the catch just short of the goal line, and Spalding again stymied with a chance to score. That's got to be frustrating. If you're Coach Schmidt and company, getting into the red zone on multiple different occasions here and unable to come away with points. Again, not the best ball there by Washington. Yeah. They've made some hay on those kind of wheel route looking plays, but kind of went for broke there and came up bust. Take another look at it here. 50-50 opportunity. A heck of a play by the DB McDonald. Yeah, Washington probably wanted to give his guy a little bit more of a chance on that one. So ball on the one-yard line, maybe the two. So it looks like Jones is back in the game trying to get a man to jump. Instead, his tackle jumps. Of course, in the grand scheme of things, not the biggest problem for prep is – they lose one yard on the play. Yeah, half the distance to the goal. Not too costly, but. John Paul Schreiber, the man that jumped off sides. So again, coming out in this short yardage sneak formation and just pushing forward. And Jones will get minimal yardage. It's a little bit of breathing room, though. Thought we'd see some iteration of the brotherly shove there, Jeremy. 
Well, the one thing they do have, they've got Washington out as a lone receiver. Normally, Eagles, as you always, we always see, they kind of put everyone back there. So always a chance Jones could step back and throw one to him. Now he's a little more traditional shotgun here. So he'll hand it off. West cuts it back and has the first down as he broke about three tackles. And that's a tough one. And I think luckily for the Cavaliers, that could have been 99 or 98. Yeah. As he looked like he might break the last one. You see it right here. You cannot arm tackle a big physical back like Isaiah West. See it right there. Guys trying to rip at the football down three possessions. I get the mentality, but you got to secure the tackle. Again, West this time has his pins cut out from underneath of him after a gain of four. This linebacking crew. For Spalding, decorated bunch, obviously led by Keyshawn Flowers. Elijah Jones and company make their impact as well. Second and six coming up. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. St. Joe's with a 17-0 lead. Hands off to West. He'll be hit from behind and brought down. Good job by Boston to backtrack and help bring him down. That yeah, big-time tackle made there. Open space is Jones. So a third, and we'll call it a long two here. And St. Joe's, I think, is going to have to run a play here. Make sure you're watching the ball here. Again, they do go hard count, and Spalding do a good job to stay on side. Five seconds to go, and <laughs> looks like they're going to let the quarter run out. So a big third down coming up when we get back to Severn, Maryland. St. Joe's still leading, but Spalding looking to get the ball back with a chance to score and try to eat into this lead on the MIA game of the week. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. Become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. You have an opportunity to do well academically, athletically, but you also have an opportunity to do well vertically with the building between yourself and God. And what more can you ask for? Saw the Spalding dance team put on a great show at halftime. Keeping it going now. Cheerleaders trying to keep the spirits up as Spalding trailing 17 to nothing. Big third and two coming up for St. Joe's. Josh Jones in the shotgun. He'll keep it himself, and he will have first down the yardage. On a gain of five, all the way out to the 25-yard line. Once again, good push up front from the St. Joe's offensive line. Looked like Samas Jones wasn't touched until he reached the yard to gain. Right now, St. Joe's on their second lowest scoring output of the season. They had 14 in the season opening loss against IMG, that 17-14 to 14 loss. Up the middle goes Phillips for no gain. Nice job once again by this defensive front. Keon Flowers, the brother of the Maryland commit, Keyshawn Flowers that time, one of the first guys on the scene. Keon will be a walk-on for the Terps. Plays like that, it'll be a scholarship player before you know it. It's in his blood. Second down, 
Handoff goes to Phillips. Nice tackle coming up from the secondary, Gillis, to cut out his legs. Yeah, Trent Gillis, as well as Justin Snell, multiple members of this Spalding secondary willing to come in there and stick their face in it during the run game. Remember, Spalding lost Tyler Brown on the first series of the contest on a collision on a hurdle by Samaj Jones. Jones went way up in the air. I think maybe caught him with a knee. And he has not been in the game since. Third and seven. Jones finds a man. And does he get the feet down? He does as Ramir Hardy for a 12-yard gain out across the 40-yard line for a first down. That was a big boy throw from Samaj James. Yeah, Keyshawn Flowers bearing down on him as he tries to make this throw. Knows he's going to take the shot. Puts a good pass on Hardy. Now even more chance for St. Joe's to run some clock. Handoff going wide is Sanchez. Gets to the corner and it'll be taken down. Shoestring tackle as Ship's able to bring him down. And now a flag down behind the play. And that's going to be on Spalding. Looks like Snell... And Washington got tied up behind the play. Yeah, that's it's been the story of the of the night, Jeremy. This this St. Joe's offense constantly getting on the perimeter here. Using their speed. Kudos to this offensive line. Creating these lanes, the receivers doing a heck of a job blocking downfield as well. So fifteen yards and now St. Joe's coming up for their first scoring good scoring opportunity since the first half as Jones will run it for three off right tackle yeah, the clock going to be something to monitor here as we're getting ready to get under the nine minute mark if you're St. Joe's here you'd love to not give the ball back potentially I mean it it could get that way when you're as good as running the football as they are Nine and a half to go. But they can definitely put a big dent in it if they choose to. Sanchez off right tackle. Spins through and somehow gets through that gap. A couple tacklers had him dead to right. Just kind of got skinny and got by him and might have a first down. Yeah, I'm amazed at how easily they're getting on the edge of this Spalding defense. You see it once again. Time they... Pull the left guard, Khalil Stewart. He's the guy that provides that kick out block. And as you mentioned, the running back, Sanchez getting skinny and finding the hole. Honestly, a lot of just out flanking right now. Yeah. And you, you mentioned it, some real good pulling guards and tackles from this St. Joe's team. But they're the one kind of sealing the edge. But kind of tough sometimes in that 3 3 5 to get that outside run support, especially the way that Spalding plays their front. Jones going to keep it. Off left tackle this time, and will push forward, and he'll have a gain of around seven on the play. And we talked about it before against the rugged run game. That can wear you down, and right now it looks like to be what's happening to Spalding. Yeah, 110%. And you mentioned them playing this three-down defensive front. It's allowing these guards to get up to the second level immediately. Another man down. Looks like this might be Khalil Stewart. Seen that a few times tonight, and it looks Another like he cramp. might be cramping. Man, that's like the third or fourth kid we've seen tonight. Yeah, we saw that earlier with Samaj Jones. We were kind of stunned yeah. at first because we thought, okay, it's 55 degrees out. He's not cramping, obviously, but that same pushing on the toe, trying to get the leg going again. Yeah, they're feeding him water. <laughs> I've heard some crazy remedies. Jeremy on how to stop a cramp, pickle juice. Well, I, I tell you what, that's our Philadelphia viewers tonight. They know yeah. that one. That was the old Deuce Daly pickle juice story. Yeah. From, I think a game against the Cowboys back in when they were playing at the old Texas Stadium where it got really hot in that place in early season games. And you know, so that's a, that's, a, that's a Philly special, pardon the pun. <laughs> I'm sure they won't mind it. Again, next up for Spalding will be a big one against Loyola Blakefield. 
They had a big win this year against Gonzaga of D.C. So they're looking to maybe question the supremacy of Spalding. Spalding, of course, won the MIA last year. Up next for St. Joe's will be a matchup against Roman Catholic. They came into the night the only other undefeated team in the Philly Catholic League. So it could be a challenge for them. Yeah, two teams that have a ton of schedule left after this week. And based on the opponents you listed, it doesn't get much easier coming out of this one. Two teams that really have established themselves as one of the elites on the East Coast. So a second in three coming up as Jones will bring him back out. As Stewart goes off. Into the game for him will be Lakeen Steele. Actually, Steele moving over from his center spot. And around the end goes Sanchez, bang down from the secondary. Now, I know that one didn't go for six or seven, Jeremy, but once again, getting on the edge of this Spalding defense. They have found real success with this running game. You mentioned the 3-3-5 front and how that presents challenges trying to run fit. I mean, St. Joe's taking advantage of it. Sanchez bounces to the outside again. This time a big hit laid on up from the secondary. I believe that might have been Gillis again. Yeah, it is. Good job by Gillis and Keyshawn Flowers stringing that one out. So Stewart comes back in as Tolan heads off. Tolan and Felder handle his tight end responsibilities as the extra lineman. Jones fakes the hand off to West, takes up the middle, and he's pinwheeled down short of the sticks. He's grabbing that knee, Jeremy. He took a big shot there at the end of that play. And now Jones pounds the turf. He is not a happy camper right now. And again, we talked about it before. That's always one of the things I always kind of worry about late in games, yeah. especially. And 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 not not at all a dirty play by. No. But when you're in this situation, if no. you're Spalding, you're trying to knock balls loose. You're just trying to get out frustration. Yeah. And that quarterback can take some wicked hits late in the game. And I know, obviously, not at all concern. You, know, you play your game, but sometimes I always say, yeah. that's what the running backs are for. And they're definitely, I know, Kasim Phillips and Isaiah West, Sanchez and company, they don't mind getting a few extra touches. And, 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 and obviously, anyone you know, watching, not meaning it from the running backs are expendable, but you have yeah. so many good ones. Again, you can almost have an assembly line of running backs for St. Joe's you say, hey, we got the 17-point lead. Let's go ahead and run it. We're fine. Instead, though, Jones goes down, and let's see what they go with here. They've got his helmet off, and you can only hope for the best. But you, you kind of called it immediately, kind of took a bit of a hit down in the legs and kind of pounded that turf, unlike the first time where he was just, oh, it's a cramp. Get yeah. me back in the game. So you can only hope for the best for Samaj Jones as they do get him up. So hopefully – Maybe just a bruise of some sort. Yeah, I wonder what the plan's going to be for Coach Roken and company. The one play that Jones missed earlier in the third quarter, they go wildcat yep. with David Washington. And on the first play, Jeremy, snap goes over his head. Everyone's standing on the sideline with their hands on their head like, what the heck happened? So we'll see if they actually go with the backup quarterback in this situation or if it's more David Washington. And it will be Jack O'Connor in the game for a key third and two here. West is the back. Connor gives it to him. West bounces to the outside. West is in for the score, but flag is down. Let's see who they call this one on. It will be on St. Joe's, so back them up. Good stop there by Spalding. I tell you what, how tough is Samaj Jones? He's coming back in the game. Wow. The ability to 
take a licking and keep on ticking. Samas Jones showing off his toughness. Most definitely. So again, from the reaction, we thought maybe this would be a yeah. I, mean, a, I don't know what to think. A lengthy, at least a, a few plays, but back in after one play. So that's going to move them back. We'll see where the spot will be. As they will call the hold and push them back to the 14-yard line. Now they can get a first down, down at the four. So waiting for a play call in from the sideline as the clock is stopped. 6.26 to go. And they'll mark it for play. The hold up here. Now they will get the play they're looking for. Yeah. Miss Spalding here, you need to stop. 6.26 left, three possession game. Not all the way out of it. Starts right here, though. West again around the end. West will be close to the sticks, and he may have a first down. will be just short. Mm. So a nine, maybe ten-yard gain on third down, and that same place they've been hurting Spalding all game long, going off tackle, spreading them out, and cutting it up. Once again, it's a little outside zone. All the offensive linemen taking a step to the right, handling their business, and letting West do the rest. So fourth down, hand it off to West. West bounces to the outside, gets through a tackler, has the first down. He may have a touchdown by the time it's all said and done. He does. Touchdown, St. Joe's. Man. West, his second score of the game. And he looks like he puts this one out of reach. It's going to be tough. Looked like Keyshawn Flowers had him dead in the rights in the backfield for a tackle for a loss, but West... As he has all night, making the first defender miss, breaking tackles. The flag has gone down. Looks like maybe some chirping out there again. And there you see it. As they just push him on in. Let's see if this is on both teams or just one. On Sportsmanlike on St. Joe's. So we'll see if. They move them back or take it on the kickoff. Looks like they'll take it on the kickoff, trying to maybe get a big play there. Shoulder on for the extra point. And another flag is down. Offsides on Spalding. So they will decline it. Shoulder will line up again. Penalties was something both of these coaching staffs discussed coming into tonight. They both had their fair share. Shoulder boots it through, and now St. Joe's up 24 to nothing. So technically, still a three possession game. Yeah, I was going to say. But a Big kickoff return here would be huge. We take another look at the West again. touchdown. Flowers had the opportunity right there. As you see it, West, though, just a tremendous job making him miss. He's somebody that's going to be a big-time contributor at the next level. An injury cost him most of last season. They told, him about us, they told us about him during the week, Jeremy, the ability to hurt you out of the slot as well. But most of his damage tonight – Done outside of the tackles. I was going to say in between the tackles, but it's really been strictly runs on the edge that has hurt this Spalding defense. Yeah, the scheme coming in, it's been a lot of that kind of almost stretch it and get up the field. You get a lot of pulling guards to kind of seal the edge as well, but you have kind of a three-headed monster with Phillips, West, and Sanchez as a tough ass to hold them down and now up 24 to nothing with 541 left to go in the contest. And the ball will be kicked off from the 25 yard line due to the unsportsmanlike conduct. So a chance here for Spalding to get a good return. They've only returned one was the first of the game as Igwebe did take it back out to the 30. 
Yeah, this can be a big play here. Wetmay is somebody that is dangerous when he gets the ball in space. We'll see if they elect to kick it to him or not. Shoulders boot will give Igwebe a chance from his 10. Up the middle goes Igwebe now to the outside. And great coverage by the St. Joe's special teams to hold him down at the 25 yard line. See what Malik Washington and company have in store. We've been talking about it. They've had success moving the ball in between the 20s, but. On several different occasions, these drives have stalled down in the red area. He really twice had a chance to score touchdowns on fourth down plays and unable to cash them in. And when you play a team like St. Joe's, you got to get some of those, if not all of them, to have a chance to stay yeah. in it. So Washington will lead his guys out, finds Igwebe, makes the first man miss, but the second man brings him down. Notice what St. Joe's mentality is here. Up three scores, willing to live with all the underneath stuff, trusting that your guys are going to come up and make a tackle. Looks like Newton back in the game. He went out earlier. Washington now has to scramble, and he's going to keep it yeah. and will again take the loss. Yeah, the receiver's got to do a better job helping Washington out in these scramble drill situations. Nice job by the offensive line. Kyle, you see it. Kyle Schmidt. And sometimes you wonder how much the guys get the coaching. He was on my wavelength there. You saw him do the yeah. pantomime. Throw it, throw it. Yeah. You don't want to give up the yardage. Yeah, that's sure. something he'll learn as he keeps going up. It's always important to take that incompletion when you're allowed to. Washington. Looking for Guebe. What a throw as he fits it in over the shoulder of Saka for a first down. Big time catch by Guebe as well. Not known really as a possession guy. Someone that's a little bit of a jitterbug and will make you miss in space, but that time showing off the possession ability. Playing fast. Washington going to keep. Washington up the middle. Washington out in the open field. Can Saka catch him? Washington will go to the house. Touchdown for Spalding. That'll wake the crowd up, Jeremy. 58 yards for Malik Washington. I mean, just beautiful ball fake there on the read option. Fooling that play side defensive end. And he was off to the races. What a run by Malik Washington, and now an all-important two-point conversion to keep themselves in the game. Yeah. That was long speed, Jeremy. Looks like Spalding wasn't alert to the fact they needed to go for two. Washington goes under center. Curtis the back behind him, and tough throw. Aguebe tries to stay on his feet and can't do it. Tough one there as... <laughs> They had something set up, but Washington may be a little bit tired. Not a great throw and no chance on that one against the stellar St. Joe's D. We've seen Washington on a couple of these, what we would describe as gimme throws, Jeremy. One hopping it, throwing it short. Got to make the layups. Now, I will say this, and we talked about it before. We're old defensive linemen, but I know, especially when I was coming up, was get the laces throw, right? Yeah. Now it's a lot of those quick throws where you're not yeah. – getting the laces you have to wonder and you brought this up I talked to Kyle Schmidt before the game he's like look it's not windy we should be okay you have to wonder wet ball maybe not throwing yeah. with the laces maybe that's what's happened today maybe affecting his grip Washington we touted him coming in four-star recruit got a bunch of different offers from a bunch of different power five schools including Maryland who we'll asked coach Loxley here in attendance to watch him but he has been he's been off this afternoon he still made some good plays and really had them in position with a couple of uh, conversions. Yeah. Really, this is a completely different ball game. And again, this is really the first time Spalding playing this type of opponent. And onside kick, and that will get through everybody. Yeah. And it'll be St. Joe's ball as 
Walsh didn't get the hop he was looking for there, just kind of skidded along on the wet grass. We look at Washington here. All the St. Joe's defenders going with the running back, Curtis. And Washington pulls it, says, see you later. The other thing I wonder, Linnell, it looked like they might have caught them in a stunt. Yeah. Because it looked like I saw Strats feverishly trying to get to the outside <laughs> from his D tackle position. That's not fun if you've got to get all the way yeah. out there. And Malik Washington made them pay for it. But right now, barring a turnover, looking less and less like Spalding's going to have a chance to win this one. Though they do get on the board. And you see right there, number four. Malik Washington, can they talk to about him to us before the game? Coach Schmidt said, look, you know, really first time we had a chance to connect with him, he was thrown on a 100-degree day down near my brother's place in Annapolis. His mother called me, went over there, talked to him, and just couldn't have been a better kid. Yeah. He's like, look, for all the talent and all that, he's just a really fun kid to be around and so glad to have him in this program. Here's the handoff. Now a new running back into the game as – that's Taj Deitches. And now a timeout by Spalding as they look to conserve some clock and get the ball back. We'll pause here in Severin as St. Joe's trying to bleed some clock and head back to Philly with the win up 24 to six here in the MIA game of the week. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. The mist on the moors or the astroturf, either one. <laughs> On this rainy night here just south of Baltimore, Archbishop Spalding, class of the Baltimore Catholic League versus Philadelphia's Catholic finest, St. Joe's. The MIAA, of course, the real name of the Baltimore Catholic League, all the Catholic schools there. Quick pass and first down yardage and a little bit more for Washington as he'll take it down across the 45-yard line. You haven't called Washington's name a ton here tonight, but in the last two years, he has really been their number one wide receiver and the guy that makes it go for them on the perimeter. But you mentioned it, Jeremy. When you have this staple of backs, this staple of backs, I mean, they're able to catch the ball out of the backfield. They're getting to the edge. It's easy to get about, forget about your wide receivers, man, when you got backs like this. Clock is not running for some reason. <laughs> now wind the clock. The St. Joe's, of course, was hanging out there waiting for that clock to run. They're going to try and take as much time off as possible. <laughs> yeah, so much for them keeping it for the final nine minutes of the game, right? You see right interesting here. This is almost a little sugar huddle here. As he waits for the signal for 10 seconds, I believe, from the official, and then they'll go up and run the play quickly. Rarely see this. This is kind of cool. Again, no play clocks here, yeah. high school game. <laughs> and handoff again. This time it's Deitches. Mm. Bang down, but not until a gain of four. Deitches, just like the rest of these backs, good vision in this zone blocking scheme, putting that foot in the ground getting up field the right side of this offensive line though Christian Leonard JP Stribber I mean making plays creating lanes making life easier for these backs I could probably run through some of these holes Jim. Nah, don't push it don't push <laughs> it maybe more you than me that's for sure so second down and again they'll come up snap again hand it off to Deitches Deitch just stacked up this time, though he yeah. keeps his feet going. Ends up getting about a half a yard. 2.45 and rolling. 
St. Joe's on their first down or two. This one will be in the books. For Spalding here. This is a measuring stick game for you coming in. Your offense was a little bit bogged down. The weather may have something to do with that. I think you got to hold your head up high here. You were in the game for most of this one. Moving the ball in between the 20s. Just unable to come away with it. And off the Deitches again. Bounces to the outside. And he'll be very close. Brought down just short of the sticks as the official waves the arm and says it's in bounds. So now Schmidt will take his timeout. He's got one left. And a big fourth down coming up here as Archbishop Spalding tries to get it back one more time. Talked about it before. Their next game, a big one, will be at Loyola Blakefield. And then Mount St. Joseph to wrap the season up. Then the MIA playoffs. While it'll be a game against Roman Catholic for St. Joe's. And they go into the PIA playoffs. Those are statewide. Yeah. Again, it's publics and privates together. And there's been a hubbub about that for years yeah. in the Keystone State. Again, down in the D.C. Baltimore area, it's pretty, yeah. it's very, very separated. It's public schools play for those, publics play for theirs both in Maryland, Virginia, and really D.C. as well. Handoff around the end, almost fumbling. It goes Sanchez, but I think he's going to have the first down, though he's very close, and no, they're going to stop him. Looked like that handoff wasn't clean, Linnell, no, it and had it on his hip and had to pull it back in. That probably keeps him from getting the first down. They yeah. have a measurement here, but Spalding already sending their guys on the field. Yeah, it looked like it was Keyshawn Flowers. It burst through the middle of that defense. So good stop there and give Spalding a chance here for a quick two minute drill. Maybe make it interesting. Yeah. And time to get to watch this star studded group of receivers along with this four star quarterback. I'll say thank you, but as we mentioned, it's been a tough sled for them here tonight. Washington, some uncharacteristic misses. We saw him rip off the 58-yard touchdown, but outside of that, not a lot of big plays given up by the St. Joe's defense. Washington looking long for Agwebe and Saka. What a play by the linebacker, showing off those old safety skills, and that should put a lid on it here in Severn as he was step for step with Agwebe to make the pick and turn it over to the Hawks. Yeah, I wonder if Washington on that one misjudged the length of Saka because it looked like Iwebe was a step behind him, but this kid is in phase all the time because he's so long. Again, son of Tony Saka, the former Penn State quarterback. And talk about his length, got all kinds of programs checked in on him. Offers from Georgia, Florida State, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, Oregon, USC. Those are just the best of the best. Yeah. <laughs> There's more after that. Wow. Again, plays like that show you why. Is able to play. Yeah. Probably going to end up going. We'll see. Has some skills to do both. But he really is a player and fitting capper to this game. We'll see exactly how St. Joe's plays it is. Sanchez around the end. And he's out in space and brought down. What a play to track him down by the big defensive lineman, Mikel Oliver. Wow. Play until the final whistle. Let's take another look at the pick here from Washington. Yeah, nice job by, by Saka. Step for step with a guy like Guibe, one of the fastest in the state. Looked like that... Uh, McDonald might get over to make the pick from the safety spot. Of course, he had the big one earlier, but Saka didn't need the help. No. And this one's all done, so St. Joe's going to come and go into victory formation. They'll close this one out. And now flag down for delay a game, I believe. So 
tell you what, Linnell, it was, yeah. it was crazy. They were so good at getting up right afterwards when they were actually running plays. When they go to kneel it out, they don't get there in time. <laughs> All right. I'm impressed by both both of these squads, how competitive they were on each side of the line of scrimmage. The St. Joe's offense kept saying it during the broadcast, Jeremy. It's a lifestyle choice when you go 60-40, run pass split. Everyone's got to be bought in from the perimeter guys, your skill guys at receiver, your offensive linemen, quarterback. They've been unstoppable here tonight. So should need one more snap to wrap this one up. St. Joe's showing why they're a powerhouse, ranked eighth in the latest USA Today poll. Now, Spalding going to learn some lessons from this yes, one. One of the are. coaches we work with always says, win or learn. Yeah. And Spalding going to take a few things from this one and now maybe a little bit of jawing late, trying to line up for the handshake line, but. That may not end up happening tonight. And that's going to do it for tonight as the final score, St. Joseph's Prep 24, Archbishop Spalding 6. Final thoughts, Linnell? Yeah, interesting road ahead for both of these programs for Spalding. I know they got a sick feeling right now in their belly, losing at home, on homecoming in front of a raucous crowd. This offense kind of stalled, but I'm curious to see how Malik Washington and company bounces back. You got a four-star recruit like him. This is probably the most adversity he's faced this year. How they respond is going to be key on the flip side for St. Joe's. More of the same. They live and die by this running attack. Defensively, they were more consistent. Let's see if they can come home with another state championship. West with a pair of touchdowns. One for Samaj Jones as well. They come south and come away with the win, 24-6. to That'll do it from Baltimore. We'll see you next time on the MIA Game of the Week.